This is the Play to Pro podcast where every pitch of every game matters and where players, parents, and coaches come together to win both on and off the field. Uh, we got Cole and his dad, Tom, on the show today. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, thanks so much. Thank Great you. to be here. We appreciate you guys being on. Uh, Cole and Tom, they're calling from the Chicagoland area. They're in the St. Charles, Illinois and Cole is a high school senior at St. Charles. Middle infielder, right, Cole? Yes, I am. Nice, very nice. And Tom? Little third base, too, right? Yeah. So mostly little third base, a little hot corner. And Tom yeah. has been coaching for about 10 years now. Where, Tom, can you tell everybody where you coach and what, how long you've been doing yeah, that? Yeah, so uh, I've been a youth baseball coach uh, around the area for uh, a number of, of different teams. Um, Anywhere from St. Charles Boys Baseball to uh, the Aurora Aces to the Illinois Hawks, um, Northern Illinois Reds, number of different programs around around the the area. Yeah, so you've worked with a lot of different ball players. So you've been really got a lot of good experience then. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been great. Yeah, I love it. It's fantastic. Well, do you guys have any questions for me tonight? Oh uh, yeah, I was wondering what your daily routine was when you were in college. All right, so I went to Western Michigan University and my daily routine would always, it would switch from being in season to being in the off season. And in the off season, it was really regimen. Uh, like almost like every 15 minutes I knew what I was doing. But obviously being in college, they call you a student athlete right? You're not an athlete student. So you have to really pay attention to your academics. And actually, I was just an average high school student. And when I went to Western Michigan, they told me if I don't maintain a 3.0, I won't be eligible to play my freshman year. And that lit me up. And I was at the library studying <laughs> probably for the first time in my life. But no, I, I really took it serious. I really started applying myself. But with the routine, that takes a lot of time, right? I, I wanted to focus a lot on baseball and whatnot, but now I have to focus on studying too. So we would have early morning waits, you know, starting at six o'clock, probably three days a week. Um, and then on the other days we didn't work out, I would make sure I'm working out on my own. But then I would just stay on campus this whole time, throughout this whole routine. I would I wouldn't even go back. The only reason why I'd go back to our apartment was probably just to sleep. Unless it was the weekend. We got the weekends off. But um I'd stay on campus, do the early morning workouts, go to class, go to the library, come to the clubhouse, take a nap, go back and eat something. And before you know it, it's practice for about two or three hours. And then since our schedules are are pretty flooded. I would go back to class after uh, practice, most likely, and then go home and sleep but, um, and start it all over again. But I'm sure that's becoming a, a college. You're going into college next year, right? You're going to Oakland, Oakton Community College. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah, you're going to have to learn how to manage your time even more yeah. uh, than you are right now. So. I wish I had a nickel for every time I told him that. You told him that before? <laughs> you must be a good dad. Manage your time. Manage your time, yep. Yeah, that's that's the number one thing. That's, I mean, it's it's always a, a, a work in progress to understand how to manage your time. But, Cole, did you have any more questions besides the routine? Or do you understand the routine, like, that I went through, how regimented yeah. it is? I, uh, from what I've heard from Oakton, I'm assuming it's pretty similar to what we're going to be doing next year, so. So you guys going to be doing like the early morning weights and stuff? Yeah, that's what I heard. And then we'll have practices later after classes. Yeah. So are you prepared for that? You ready for that? Hopefully. <laughs> no, you'll do great. And the greatest yeah, thing mean, about it is that you got your teammates doing the same thing. You're not in it by yourself, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, I was wondering what's the biggest difference you see between guys that make it to the pros and the guys that don't? So guys that make it to the pros and guys that don't, I mean, that's got to be the mental side of the game, 
And I've actually been talking about the mental side of the game a lot on the last few podcasts that I've been doing. Um, that's, the, that's the separator. And I started taking that serious about your age when I went into college. Uh, I read a great book called Mind Gym by Gary Mack. And it gave me some good exercises to do, but it, it separated me, taught me how to slow the game down. But you could tell, like I've had teammates before. I know we go through hard times, but I've had teammates, their body language and the way they would talk to themselves or the things they would say, um, you could definitely tell like they were over it, you know? And it's like almost like cancerous. Once you start talking these things, and start moving in this, these ways, it eats you up really quick. And I want to be clear, like, I'm human. Like, I do the same thing, too, right? There was days where I, I said some negative stuff, and, um, and my body language was pretty poor. But I always found a way to kind of have, like, a short-term memory and understand the, the gratitude that I have for playing the game of baseball. But um, that's, that's, the, that's the separator, Cole. Um, and you'll learn that. It's the mental side of the game. There's no question. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure, Tom, coaching these young kids that you – do you agree with that? Do you see that at the young age that like you can tell by their, their body? You. you do. Me too. And, and the thing that they don't understand um, – well, let me say two things. One, first of all, I think – in terms of coaching, it's it's incumbent on us as coaches to try to foster that at a young age. I mean, if you're teaching young kids, 9, 10, 11, you know, 12-year-old travel ball players, you know, you're, you're not coaching them up to shine in front of uh, scouts. There's no scouts that are going to go to those games. But your job is to not only teach them fundamentals of the game, but also teach them the love of the game, right? So you have to be able to recognize that and help them through that because, you know, I would say most of the kids have that kind of issue at some point in time or another, you know, I, you're playing, you're going along, you're playing really well and all of a sudden you go over 10 and the whole world is coming apart. Right. Yeah. And it's hard mentally to get back on track. So from a coaching perspective, that's a big part of what we need to do. I completely agree. Like that positive reinforcement, but I like what you said about like instilling that love of the game into these young players. And I was fortunate enough to have a mom and a dad that were able to do that with me, to put the time in and to coach me through these tough times. I mean, I spent a lot of time with my dad. My dad would be out there for hours with me uh, hit me ground balls, throw me batting practice, and just to have his support of putting that time in, and then obviously having my mom's, you know, that, that uh, nurturing love, like all these times that I'm failing, she's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, I'm going to get through this. So the combination of those two, I mean, to instill the love, I, mean, I think it comes from parents a lot too. Yeah, you know, that's, that's really important. I, obviously, I'm a coach and I'm a parent. And, and there's two different perspectives that you have to have. Now, throughout Cole's um, youth baseball career, I've been both a parent and a coach. And making that transition for me was really difficult. Um, and and I, I love the fact that you talk about your parents because I think from a, uh, from a coach perspective and, and from a parent specifically perspective, it's really, really good to know, hey, you know, what, what, what was the, the relationship between a professional player and his dad and or mom growing up? Because going into it, you know, as a nine-year-old, um, I've never been in youth baseball before. It's, it's a completely different game. It was when he got in it than it was when I was playing youth baseball. And there's no blueprint for it. As a parent, you don't know. So he and I have worked out uh, – sort of a process and it took us years to kind of get to that point you know we had our times where I would say something he'd be really unhappy about it but um, uh, in those times when I was um, not coaching I learned that I needed to shut my mouth and so I, I got in the habit of bringing a notebook with me to the games and so instead of sitting in the stands 
yelling out, um, you know, turn your hips or whatever it is that you want to tell your kid, um, I would write it down on the book. And then after the game, on the ride home, my cue to be able to discuss that would be Cole saying, what'd you think? Now, oftentimes it would be 15, 20 minutes into the ride home after he like, you know, beat up the inside of the car or whatever, if he wasn't happy having a good game, but that was my cue. And at that point in time, he told me, that's him telling me, I'm ready to hear what you have to say. And then I would say, okay, you did this really well and you did this really poorly. But if you're gonna, gonna follow this guys, make sure that you put a lot of positive stuff in there as much as you put in the corrective stuff. That's an excellent point. Make sure you're having that positive reinforcement. And that's what I'm learning as a coach now, coaching with the Oakland A's and doing a lot of the stuff with baseball utility, coaching all these young players. I'm learning that's what they want. They want the positive reinforcement. It's amazing. It, you could just tell them, hey, n- nice level swing, good finish, good strong finish. The next swing is even better than the, the one before. It's amazing if you can just build them up and that's where I, I, can, I can break down a hitter really quick, but maybe that's not what I need to do. Cole, did you, like, well, I know it was a couple of years ago, but like, how do you get through that? How, how do you get through those tough times? Or like, um, you got your guard up, you don't really want to listen. Uh, how, how do you become more coachable? Yeah. Um, I just had to uh, really just think it'll help me get better, so I need to hear it. I didn't really necessarily want to hear it all the time, but I wanted to get better to play at the next level. So I just had to bite the bullet and listen to what he had to say. That's, that's, you bought into his program. Now you get to play college baseball, man. Yeah. Not, not many kids get to do that. Like to be mm-hmm. quite honest with you, that's quite the accomplishment. No joke, man. And uh, so one, one quick story about my dad and me is I, I tell this a lot, but I'll share with you guys is I remember one summer, it was like in the middle of the summer, maybe 4th of July, and my brothers, the rest of my family was going up to the lake house to go on the jet skis, on the boats and everything. And I'm like, dad, I don't want to go to this tournament. I want to go up to the cabin. I want to go up to the lake and actually enjoy my summer. And my dad was super like stoic about it. And he says, Adam, well, what do you want to do with baseball? And he knew the answer already, right? I said, Dad, I want to play in the major leagues. He says, well, then you got to get in the car. We got to go play in this tournament. <laughs> but very stoically. I mean, but I, that's all he said. And I got in the car, and thank goodness I did, right? Because if I don't, if I start going there, because he would have let me. Like, it was my choice. But he's, he almost guided me, right? He just kind of like, in a sense, cultivated me in that sense without pushing me or like, no, get in the car. Like, I never had that. I was always like, uh, Adam, you make the choice. You know what you want to do. So I thought it was pretty, I I love telling that story about my dad. Yeah, well, that's critical. That's kind of, you know, what, what we've always tried to do. And that is, you know, I'll give him advice. But the decision is really his. It's always his. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we did after every season, because I did coach him a lot, there were two questions that we would ask and answer after every season. We would sit down, and my first question with him was, hey, do you still want to play baseball? Do you want to try out next year for the next team? And then the next question is, if you do want to do that, do you still want me to coach? Hmm. And you know, those were questions that we spent some time discussing and the answers to those questions. We spent some time discussing that. And it was important for both of us, I think, that we make that decision or that he makes that decision going forward. Oh, that's fantastic. Because not only are you developing a baseball player, but you're obviously you're developing your son and developing a baseball fan, right? Because, Nicole, you – you know, you're going through this right now. You're in the grind right now. You're a baseball player right now. Yeah. But to continue on loving the game and going to, go to the game, or who knows what you can become. Man, you could, you could become a general manager of a major league baseball team or a minor league baseball team or a college coach. You could stay in the game somehow. 
Um, or even if it's just volunteering your time to coach younger kids. Like, that's the thing. You're not only creating a baseball player, right, or developing a baseball player, developing your son and a fan of the game, I think is an really important point to make. Well, a, a good, strong human being, too. I think baseball, uh, baseball is, uh, is such a, an analogy, I guess, for life in, in that, you know, if you go out, and I've, I've been in business for 30 years now, and you have to hire people, and you have to fire people, and you look for certain uh, characteristics in people, and um, if you find a kid that comes to you and has played organized sports, it doesn't have to be baseball, but in any kind of a team sport, um, I was always, my, I, my interest was always heightened because I knew what that child had to go through to become a young adult. Um, and you know, the things that they had to endure, the things, the choices that they had to make, um, and you know, the discipline that they had to have. And, you know, you can get a whole bunch of, of, of good experience in school for whatever profession that you choose to follow, but the added discipline that you get from playing baseball or playing a, a team sport is um, not only invaluable, obviously, in the sport, but invaluable in the rest of your life. That's 100%. And it does. It translates right from the field into everyday life. For me, I've, I've learned a ton of great experiences. I've learned from a lot of great influences in my life. And Tom, that's a great point. Um, you guys are awesome. It's been great having you guys on the show. I know a lot of people benefit from tuning in to the Player to Pro podcast and listening to real life stories like this. It's awesome. So I appreciate it. Hey, it's that. our pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you yeah. for uh, doing this and giving back. We, we appreciate it. Uh, I love doing it. <laughs>